Okay, so Thomas, um, what subject are you studying at the moment? Um, I study English and sports science. Okay, and take us back to when you were applying to university. What made you choose that course? Um, well, throughout like secondary school um, and sixth form or college, some people like may know it as I you know I was very you know, the two subjects that you know I was interested in and you know were my favorite were English and PE so um like having been someone that was like an avid fan of sports and I, I did a lot of sport and stuff um you know Loughborough was sort of a natural choice for me um based on like, all the stuff I'd heard about their facilities having been to the open days and spoken to staff um and just other students really you know they, they, they kind of sold it to me from there uh, Loughborough was the only open day I went to um and I knew after that I didn't really want to be or choose any other uni um so to speak so yeah just an international reputation for its you know sporting you know, excellence its facilities uh, as well as its student experience as well um we're all kind of like leading factors into why i chose why i chose loughborough okay um could you tell us a bit about the ucas process like how how do you actually apply for ucas first of all can you um so, oh, this is really bringing it back. Um, so UCAS, basically, um, you know, I had a, a great deal of help from my sixth form at the time. So you'd, um, you know, you'd go on the UCAS portal, you'd have obviously like a login and everything. And, you know, you'd start working on your personal statement. Um, and in mind, you kind of know like where, like where you want to go, but you also have a few other choices as well. Um, so... Like for me, I had obviously Loughborough as my um, as my firm choice, and I think my insurance was Bath. But yeah, so you you brought up, you work on your personal statement to try and make yourself as sort of um, like desirable as possible by these by these universities, and then you like submit your um, personal statement, and then you kind of make you make your five choices. Um, so you have your your firm choice, your insurance choice, and then sort of three others as well. Um, just in case you don't get the sort of you know criteria grade wise for the um for the firm choice you at least have some options to fall back on thank you um what tips can you give to students actually doing their personal statement um you know make it don't make don't try and over complicate that's one tip i would give just for anything really like as far as a personal statement goes don't try and over complicate it don't try and make it sound sort of like overly like convoluted with a lot of you know fancy words and stuff because you know a lot of institutes it's almost like you're writing a, a cv for you know a job but like they'll kind of see through that so try and keep it authentic try and keep it true to yourself because it's meant to be a personal statement so it's meant to you know like possess like personal elements and components of it so it's meant to be something that sounds like you because you know you want these universities and these institutes to kind of get to know you as as best as possible in sort of the the word limit you have within the personal statement so if I could give one bit of advice for anyone writing a personal statement it was try and keep it true to yourself um and just yeah don't overcomplicate it because you know it may not sound as fancy or as you know just sophisticated as you may you know prefer or think it should but honestly you don't even it doesn't even really need to be it just needs to sort of be true to yourself and um you know institutes and universities looking at it will just you know be able to get to know you that way great um okay so moving a bit forward how did you choose your accommodation and what things did you look out for um so I think with accommodation and stuff, a big factor was was price, you know, based on the sort of maintenance loan I was receiving from student finance. It kind of like, you know, limited my options a bit down. So, but naturally I chose, um, so my accommodation I chose was Telford, um, which I believe are the second, as of now, like the second cheapest tool on campus. Um, I chose them just based on, mainly based on the price, but also the location as well. So Telford were very close to, the library very close to the bus stop so I was able to if I ever needed to get something from the library like a book or anything I was able to go there um, within a minute and if I ever needed to go into town I was able to get the bus because it was really close um, to the bus stop as well um, 
and yeah, it was predominantly just the price, really. It was a nice, like, sort of cheap and cheerful hall. Um, you know, on the open day, I kind of looked around Telford and a few other halls, and you know, for me, it was it kind of ticked all the boxes. It had a, you know, had a bed, had a room, had a like had a sink. Everything was pretty much like how I wanted it to be. It was very simple, but you know, for me, it suited my needs perfectly. And um, what advice would you give to students applying for accommodation? Because for me, I wasn't able to look at the actual rooms, or I don't know. They don't they don't give you the option to actually look at the rooms. You basically just apply, and they give you what's there. So to avoid getting something that you don't want, what would you? What advice would you give? Um, I'd say if you well, if you get an accommodation or a hall that you didn't really, you know, consider and really want, I'd say first off, don't be disheartened because every sort of hall is special in its own way, you know. But I guess for some people, um, it may come down to like a few other things. So they may have preferred somewhere closer to their lectures or like I said before, closer to the library or just cheaper um in price. So I'd say if you get a hall that you don't really want, I'd say don't be disheartened. But if you obviously want to change it and able to change it, I'd say um, go like, speak to the student accommodation centre, try and explain your situation. You know, either say like, you know, you can't really afford it. It's not what you're looking for. Are you able to sort of like change it and they'll try and give you something similar? So there's like a few halls that are very similar in like price and stuff because they're like essentially the, they offer the same sort of thing. So I know Bakewell, and Rigra are very similar in price because they essentially offer like um, the same sort of thing. So, yeah, if you're not able to like because you're not able to look at your room, so you kind of judge like the sort of quality of the room by the price and stuff. So I'd say um, just try and do as much research as possible. And if you don't get the one you want, um, don't be disheartened because I know like someone that um, got a room in Elvin when they were looking for Bilmo and then they really ended up enjoying Elvin. So um, and just remember, it's only for one year as well. Like you don't have to commit to that hall. Um, again, next year you can move to a different hall. You can even move off campus. Um, so yeah, just I'd say don't be disheartened because whatever hall you end up in, I'm sure like you know you'll have a great sort of student experience and a great freshers experience as well um, during your first year at least. Thank you. Um, so you just mentioned freshers. Um, Tell us a bit about your freshers week or like your first, let's say your first two weeks at university. How did you find it? And um, like what advice would you give to students, like activities to do during those two weeks? Yeah, so with Loughborough sort of being the only, uni well, university, um, so that's like students union to run sort of a two week freshers, it was a freshers fortnight. You know, I didn't really know what to expect. I thought, you know, would it be good the first week, bad the second week? Because obviously, Loughborough start quite late in the year compared to other institutes side you know obviously a lot of my friends are going to university I was hearing about their freshers they were saying all this so I kind of from there had like maybe a few expectations and kind of what I could imagine it would be like um so I'd, I'd say my freshers were I'd say my freshers was pretty good it was obviously you know the first time I'd sort of lived away from home um so there was that element added to it I was like quite nervous and then you get the whole thing like prior to coming to uni like am I gonna make friends am I gonna fit in am I gonna you know is this gonna be for me um so like I, I do feel like you know how your freshers week goes kind of like it does set you up for the year because that's where you meet so many people um you do so many different activities um attend so many different events um and yeah and if you know that if that suits you down to the T then you know, you could really set yourself up for a good year. But I know a lot of people that's, you know, they're sort of freshers. Um, they didn't really feel like, you know, it was good for them. But I'd say for me personally, it was it was a good experience. I met a lot of people. I kind of got involved in stuff, you know, I'd never really done before. Um, just to clear it up, I, I never really drunk before uni and stuff. So it was kind of like a, like a new experience for me, just like clubbing and, you know, going out and just like doing things like that I never really did that back home where I lived so for me that was like it was a new experience and just kind of coming out of my comfort zone and like socializing with more people um that you know obviously were in a similar situation to me so I think it was for me my my freshers was really good great 
Um, and how about your first lectures or I don't know if you have tutorials and seminars as well, but how would how was their first ones? I think like with with first lectures, you know, obviously there's that, you know, you hear things what people say it was like they're sort of introduction lectures, they're not very important, but I mean though I mean those lectures are obviously like quite important because they do set you up um for your module and stuff so like my introduction lectures were they were okay like my, I don't have a massive amount of contact hours anyway so I was you know I, I tried to attend where I could um and if not I was able to just catch up in between but yeah my my first few lectures were were good and stuff you know it, it, they got it got quite a like a decent turnout in the first like couple of weeks or so um cause obviously a lot of people like because it's freshers and stuff in first year may feel like they don't need to attend but for like for me if you're going to attend like any lectures really like the first few lectures are sort of the important ones because they obviously outline the module and go through um everything like assessment wise and criteria wise so i think my first few lectures were good and it helped me meet a lot of people um that way in just sort of you know like a like an academic environment rather than sort of like a like a social um you know, sort of like night nightlife environment. It was nice to sort of meet people in my course and talk to people in my course. Um, that's from both like English um, and the sports science side of my degree. I was able to sort of engage with and interact with two different, you know, sets of students because I did like half of each of their degrees. So it was it was nice to, um, you know, meet people that way. Okay. Um. Did you find that your lecturers had like expectations that he wasn't ready for? Um, I don't think so. I mean, they obviously, they had expectations. I think all lecturers, all lecturers, sorry, naturally have expectations of um, of students and stuff because obviously they're, you know, they're, they're trying to lecture you or teach you the content and stuff. So they kind of expect, you know, a certain maybe level of engagement and um, like attendance as well and stuff like that. But, I mean, I don't think they had any, I mean, it's hard for them to have like individual expectations for each student because obviously they're a lecturer. So their job is to sort of, um, you know, le lecture and cater for a large group of students rather than, I guess that's where it comes down to the tutorials and the seminars. Then they're able to have sort of their own sort of smaller expectations because they get to know you on a, a more personal level and then vice versa. You, you know, it's very difficult to sort of engage the lecturer in a lecture but when it comes to seminars workshops tutorials smaller sort of um you know allotted study times it's easier to ask some questions and get to know them there but i don't think it had any sort of ex big expectations or unrealistic expectations upon starting because you know they know we're in our first year this is the first time a lot of us are living away from home so i think like topped off with first year not actually counting towards your degree i think they're sort of like you know trying to ease you in so when it comes to your second year your third year maybe even your masters and just future years you know you're sort of ready because you've had like a like a nice sort of not as pressured start to the academic year mm -hmm. okay that's interesting um so to finish this off for those who are not sure mm -hmm. about coming to university can you tell us why it is a good decision to come to university so I'm, I'm, I missed the last bit. You said, can, can you, you repeat the tell, last bit? Can Sorry. you tell us why um, coming to university is a good decision? Yeah, so I feel like, you know, obviously if you want to try and, you know, open as many doors as possible, sort of, you know, um, like learn more about, about sort of the person you want to become, I think going to university is really good for that because, you know, obviously you choose your course and stuff when you're 18 and essentially you know unless you change courses or university that's sort of you for the next three four years depends on how long your course is so I think that I think as far as why university is good I think you know because you sort of you start university you may have no idea what you want to do when you um you know graduate and whatnot but I feel like you know your university experience kind of helps you determine that and decide that you sort of work it out on the way through you know the people you meet um, you know, the sort of activities and stuff you engage in, um, the connections you establish. I think it all helps um, contribute to the sort of person you'll become, like leaving university. So like I started university, like obviously being very keen 
uh, as far as sports goes and doing a lot of sport and like actually being an athlete. But like since then, you know, like due to just various different reasons, such as injury and other other circumstances, you know, it's sort of that's not like who I'll end up graduating to be. I'll end up graduating to be like something else. So I feel like attending university is really good if you want to try and figure out what you want to do um, with your future. And it, like I said before, it keeps as many doors open as possible because when it comes to, um, you know, applying for future jobs or internships or anything along those lines, you know, you sort of have like a, a recognised qualification from, you know, from a university, you have your degree. And especially, you know, when it comes to Loughborough, that reads really well because, you know, we're internationally renowned for a lot of things such as sports, engineering, um you know, and like medicine and stuff like that, you know, we're very, you know, famous when it comes to those things. So, yeah, if I could say, you know, one thing about university and why it's a good decision to go, it's sort of, you know, it opens more doors and that's always the best thing in life because obviously, you know, it's hard, some jobs are hard to come by in certain um, areas and fields. So you want to try and give yourself as good a chance as possible um, in succeeding in life and progressing in life and doing what you want to do um, after you're studying. But yeah, I, I, I couldn't recommend it enough, really. Right, thank you. Um, so do you have any like final general advice to give? Um, I'd say for anyone thinking about, um, you know, applying for university or maybe a bit on the fence because of everything happening with COVID, that's completely understandable. Um, I'd say you know, if you don't necessarily feel like you're ready, there's no real rush, you know, if you've got your offer from um, UCAS, whether it's, you know, sort of conditional or unconditional, you can um, you can always take that up like the year afterwards if you're not comfortable. But I do feel like, you know, um, it's always a case of the sooner the better, um, you know, to really, you know, sort of get started on your sort of Loughborough journey. Um, if it is Loughborough that you are thinking of, but just any university in general, I'd say, um, you know, just to, like, don't worry about it too much. Don't, you know, overthink and overcomplicate it. Don't worry about, oh, like, naturally the few things that students have doubts about, like, oh, how am I going to survive? What am I going to cook? Like, you'll you'll eventually get it in, like, the first, like, few weeks or so. Um, so just all of those other things that you may not be used to or you may have potentially took for granted at home, you know, eventually you'll, you'll, you'll work your way around them as far as, like, being a student goes. I think that's a lot of what you know you may not realize when you actually attend uni it's like oh i actually have to do my own washing do my own cleaning do my own shopping it's just things like that but eventually you get the you get the hang of them and stuff which you know i guess for a lot of people it may not be like very easy because they're used to sort of either their parents or their family doing it for them but i'd say you know if i could give like one sort of lasting bit of advice is just sort of just sort of look after yourself just try and do all the things during your during your day to give your sort of week slash day sort of a structure just so you kind of know what you're doing and obviously having lectures um and stuff helps that because you know i have to be awake at this time to attend this lecture but just try and try and fit in all the other stuff um as well and that's everything from having a you know sort of balance between work and social life um and doing all the other small things to look out um look out for yourself and your physical and mental well-being which is very important um, so that would be what I'd um, sort of recommend and advise anyone that's thinking about um, or is due to go to university. Thank you very much.